By now, we have introduced the complete set of products to enable a commercial aircraft for broadband in-flight connectivity services. Now, we want to share the experience of retrofitting hundreds of aircraft in the context of the European Aviation Network. This will be done by Pat Patrick Gendre, Sales Director at Eclipse Technic. Salut Patrick and uh, bonjour to beautiful Paris. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, welcoming me here. Um, I'm very thrilled to be part of, uh, of this event, try to uh, just to speak about something you don't see as a passenger when you board an aircraft fitted with uh, aircraft uh, connectivity. Um, I will show you an kind of an invisible hand, um, which is actually very much important when you are thinking to connect your aircraft. So I will start my presentation now. So, of course, that was done in the uh, uh, in a very, very important project, uh, which was uh, installing the first uh, European aviation network uh, that happens to be on Airbus A320 family, C Classic and Neo aircraft. And so I will uh, speak about bespoke solution uh, design and express aircraft certification and overnight retrofit. First of all, um, the Eclipse Group uh, live and breath airborne connectivity from concept to completion. I will go a bit deeper on this. Um, first of all, we are uh, a com French company, uh, 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 part of the Eclipse Global Connectivity Group, a French company led by two individuals, Marc Pinault and Pascal Lefroy. Uh, we have 50 people inside, uh, experts in uh, turnkey airborne connectivity solutions. Our company has uh, circa 25 years of experience of delivering complex satellites and other communication systems for the civil, military, and business aviation market. We have our headquarters uh, in Paris, but uh, also our design office and production premises are respectively uh, in Toulouse and close to Aix-en-Provence uh, in the southeast of France. You can see it uh, that we are offering uh, within the group uh, hardware, design, airtime, certification, airborne applications, uh, IC capability, and delivery and support, of course. You can see uh, where we are located, as I told you before, uh, Paris, uh, Toulouse, and Aix-en-Provence. Plus, we have also extra sales office in London, UK. And uh, not uh, mentioning the fact that we have also a certification capability in the US with an office in Chicago. Highlights about uh, a bit of a story about uh, the Eclipse Group. You can see that our group was already uh, in this business a long time ago. In 2015, Eclipse acquired a company named EAD Aerospace at that time. EAD Aerospace became in 2020 Eclipse Technics to reflect uh, being part of the Eclipse Connectivity Group. We entirely specialize Eclipse Technics in the IFIC business, and we invested a lot in research and development to be able to propose a large connectivity portfolio to the airline market, available, airworthy, and affordable. So you can see that we, we were um, part of the first connected aircraft in 2003, uh, we developed a uh, first cable on STC in 2016, and of course, what interests us today is the first European air to ground STC back in 2017. Eclipse Technics is a full subsidiary of uh, Eclipse Global Connectivity Group, so we are an EASA uh, DOA since 1998. And we have also FAA STC development capabilities thanks to our office in Chicago. Our production center ensures that uh, we deliver complex airborne connectivity installation kits that are certified and shipped for integration into aircraft everywhere in the world. Our company design, substantiate, manufacture, and certify what is required to install any connectivity systems into almost every platform from business jet to large aircraft, including Airbus and Boeing. The only thing that we don't provide is the MRO work, 
We support the implementation anywhere the airlines want it, which can be its own maintenance center or a third party. From decades, we have worked with many MRO organizations all around the world. Today, we are extremely proud to serve major airlines, MROs. Thousands of Eclipse Technics modifications are flying, and more than 300 airline aircraft are fitted with connectivity provided in the past years by Eclipse Technics. You can see in this slide uh, only uh, a short view of some installation and customer we've done in the past years. When it comes to aircraft modifications, uh, the lessors part is paramount. We have seen our modification packages approved by major lessors who care about their aircraft asset. Our work is not only to ensure the airworthiness and the safety of the modification, our work is also to make it efficient, easy to deinstall, the less invasive possible solutions. We like to work upstream to talk far in advance with systems OEM providers to understand their concepts, antennas, systems, and to help them way before the product comes to the market. And in that sense, we were very, very early in the, the project of delivering the first Europe Aviation Network, and we were the major integrator for it. Some figures about the air to ground uh, STC, uh, about Europe, that uh, were giving Thales, uh, CGC, LRUs, Contron, server, and wireless access points. So there were, we, were, we split uh, the, the work in two STC associated to Europe Aviation Network. The one for the CGC part, the air to ground part, and the other for the cabin network. Now we have four years of experience of implementing uh, that solution into an aircraft on five different aircraft type models and five MRO locations, probably uh, almost over every country of Europe. We've delivered uh, 277 uh, mod kits so far. Uh, still some kits are remaining to be installed in some airlines. And the very great things, first thing to, uh, to notice is we succeeded to uh, have our installation kit to be installed in only eight hours, meaning that the installation kit of the CGC components plus the cabin network components makes only eight hours to be installed. That permits airlines to install a full cabin connectivity services overnight. That's very, very important when it comes to, uh, to keep the aircraft flying, and that our design permitted that. Some details about how the implementation were distributed along the EAG group, who was the launch customer of Inmarsat and Dutch Telecom, British Airways, Iberia, and Vueling. The remaining aircraft are for Air Angus, so far not installed, but uh, in the future, soon, perhaps. As I told you, we have to split for being able to be on time uh, the certification uh, strategy. So we split uh, two STC, one for the component, the ground component uh, one system, and the second uh, for the satellite uh, port per portion of the EAN, which is installing a little uh, small S-band antenna on the top of the fuselage. When it comes to advantages of uh, what we provided to uh, Inmarsat and uh, Dutch Telecom on this uh, project, uh, is first on the design of the kits. Our modification kits are literally entirely optimized for fast installations. Harnesses are provided pre-terminated, both ends. That is very important to notice because uh, usually uh, when it comes to installation kit, when you modify an aircraft, usually you are provide uh, only one hand terminated kit 
and that's up to the MRO to finish it uh, on the ground. But in this project, we found it more clever to supply a full terminated uh, installation kit in order to help the MRO organization to gain time on, and not to spare too much, too much time and too much man hours on, on the ground. Also, another fancy uh, features is uh, the maintenance part of the CGC antenna. We, we've conceived, we, we designed an installation that permitted uh, to deinstall very swiftly and from the outside uh, the CGC antenna without uh, deconnecting and without making too much change on, on the aircraft and to have access uh, uh, to a difficult part of the aircraft. So uh, one feature important to ease maintenance and to ease the replacement of some parts. Uh, Patrick, we had a question uh, earlier on our discussion earlier on on the amount of time to replace an antenna. Is there already some data available on uh, if we wanted to to take it off, replace it, or, or take it off for longer? Um, how long that would take then? So that's pretty simple. I have no let's say raw figure uh, here to uh, to to give you on that. But the fact that all design permits to only kind of. Uh, remove from the outside the CGC antenna is very, very quick to, uh, to, be, to be done. Uh, but we have not a lot of history and uh, uh, record of it. First, because apparently the CGC antenna is working well, so there is not too much need to, uh, to replace it. Um, but uh, the design permits a very, very small uh, um, spending time to, uh, to remove it and to replace it. Okay. No, of course, we want to not remove it. In fact, we want to <laughs> keep well, it as long as we can, but it's an interesting data point to, to see how long. But, but then if, if there was another airline uh, wanting to use it, um, there is actually no need to remove it, is there? Um, it's, not, it's not a no-go item. Um, it's, it's something that you, know, can, you, can, you can take off without it working, of course. Um, the issue, of course, is you won't have Wi-Fi on board and you'll have passenger uh, uh. dissatisfaction to deal with. But uh, It's more of the, the aircraft that's being traded to another airline which flies in another region. If, if there is air-to-ground coverage, then that should yes, be reusable. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah, you, can, you could transport it over, no problem. There'll be a small software modification on the ha um, hardware on board. Um, but in terms of transporting it over to another, another country or another airline operator that wanted to use it, um, I think you know, it'd be a very easy transition. All right. Oh, very interesting. OK, so Patrick. Uh, just wanted to check. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think you just... Uh, I'm sorry. Did I change anything? Um, about the... Yeah, another key advantage uh, that we have to face, uh, a challenge that we have to face during that, that very important program, was also to provide flexibility uh, to install uh, our packages and the certification kits alone for European uh, network and, uh, and cabin connectivity system on newly delivered uh, NEO or NEO cabin flex aircraft from Airbus. So before their entry into service. So Eclipse Technics was able in a very short time to provide the full service bulletin customized to the, to the cabin and the installation kit a very short notice before uh, delivery and uh, returning to service of the aircraft. This is a very effective and uh, efficient uh, system that we implemented and that permitted uh, the airline to welcome the aircraft very soon uh, fitted with aircraft connectivity uh, before they, they, they received it. I told you a bit before about the importance of lessors and their implication in uh, any airworthiness modification project. Uh, of course, we designed uh, all our kits in order for them to be uh, very, very uh, uh, resistant in time and uh, easy to, to repair. Uh, but also, uh, we all our kit is uh, attaining very important uh, flight cycles, uh, maintenance, uh, maintenance inspection slots. That permits to, to have an installation which, is, which, is, which can stay very much longer on, on any aircraft. Also, uh, you can see uh, on the right part of the screen, 
uh, some really uh, fancy features that we we've developed and that we are that that install many parts of the LREs inside. The smart stringer clip is a entirely own Eclipse Technics solution. It's a little mounting device that, in comparison to other systems, is uh, is attaching some parts like wireless access points and some SATCOM parts into the ceiling, but without drilling uh, the fuselage. It's a stringer clip, so basically uh, it's a clip that's strange uh, onto the frame of the aircraft, and it permits to uh, to attach without penetrate anything in the aircraft. So that's a very very nice thing that that permits uh, to gain time, but also to not damage the asset of the aircraft. So this this device can help to mount different kind of systems. And it's in the case of the Europe Aviation Network that attach many components. Also, when it comes to, and it's not a mandatory thing, but when it comes to uh, return of, in, of lease of aircraft, uh, some lessors are requiring to be able to demodify, to, to remove the, the, the system. So, we provide as an option a demodification package already designed and already available uh, that permits an entirely flush removal of anything inside the aircraft. Every harness, every mounting, every areas that were uh, affected by our installation is demodified. And that's, of course, a certified demodification. We provide also a deinstallation kit to permit this and to permit the lessors to have a, a very uh, neat aircraft after this. But again, that's not uh, an obligation, that's an option that is uh, often uh, chosen by the lessors or the oper operator. But um, if you have um, a customer who is willing to, uh, who are willing to reuse uh, part of the systems uh, in another part of the world, um, we can definitely leave the modification as is. Again, the same thing, which is some challenges uh, that are important uh, in such projects are the support and being able to support in any phases of the program, from the ignition of the, of the aircraft, for the, from their installation time, but also for in-service support. So we set up a full and 24-24, uh, seven days a week uh, support to be able to uh, support MRO organization operators with any questions, technical uh, issues that they can they can meet. And uh, we were very proud of it to have a very good uh, turnaround response time uh, and be able to uh, sometimes uh, find solutions when unexpected uh, questions or technical issues were found on some aircraft during installation. And our organization permit a very swift and quick uh, response to that kind of, uh, of issues by providing, uh, let's say, on the wing modification and certification and with speed shop uh, operations for production to modify in, in, in a very fast time our modification. For example, uh, that's always a good example to, uh, to see how you are uh, responding to issues, potential issues during project. There was a misdrilling during uh, a forward GC antenna blur installation. And uh, within two days, we were able to fix that. Uh, again, another problem, there weren't a lot of problems during that program, but uh, the doubler was not uh, wrongly installed. And uh, within three days, we were able to find a solution without impacting the return into service of the aircraft. So it's like every program. It's a it's a question of uh, uh, of uh, being frank and being honest and transparent, but address the problem very quickly and swiftly, and have the organization set up uh, on the on the behind to uh, to face every every challenge that you are that you are facing. Maybe a question because you must have learned a lot during equipping these 
300 give or take aircraft in Europe. So is there, are these learnings then available to other airlines uh, in case uh, such networks would be built in, in other countries then as well, as we're having a broad audience from Asia here uh, today? Is, is this transferable, uh, these learnings, or how would you say? Totally. I would say that uh, when it comes to STC installation integration, the big part is the first one. So the first of type is always the more difficult, the more complex. And the more aircraft you are doing, the more aircraft you are customizing, because it has to be said, in a 300 aircraft suite, not everyone has the exact same configuration. So you're, you're obliged to uh, modify, customize, and just uh, get back to, to the labor work. So um, on the Europe Aviation Network uh, integration uh, program, now we can say that we can reuse most of the things that we've learned on it and to apply to other platforms very quickly and efficiently. And uh, that's, that's, the, that's the case for the Airbus 320 family, but that's also the case for other platforms, like uh, sing, other single aisle platforms like Boeing 737, but also regional aircrafts, ATR and others. Uh, that can be, we can really learn from, from what we've done on this project on air to ground connectivity. And not mentioning the fact that uh, as Eclipse Techniques is entirely specialized for, for years now on in-flight connectivity, we have a huge uh, history of uh, uh, engineering data and experience on many our friends that permits to link the European Aviation Network uh, history of, uh, of data, but also our own uh, history. Patrick, can I maybe ask from an airline perspective, what is the advantage of an air-to-ground system in comparison uh, to a satellite installation? Yeah, sure. So, uh, as I told you, uh, the, it's little uh, systems that are installed uh, in the case of an air-to-ground system. Uh, A very uh, efficient uh, system in terms of uh, uh, of weight and how it is designed permit to also uh, not penetrate too much, not to, to damage too much uh, the the aircraft, and uh, it's also a very quick installation. When it comes to installation time, uh, being able to connect an aircraft, to install an aircraft and connect it in only eight hours. It's impossible to do that with a satellite uh, antenna installation. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big, a major change between satellite uh, installation and air to ground installation. Thanks. And and what's the biggest challenge uh, in an air to ground installation? In in this in this project uh, for us, the the big challenge was to be able to address many different uh, maintenance uh, operation centers because uh, the launched uh, customer uh, was based in several countries and were using different uh, maintenance uh, repair overall uh, centers. And uh, the trick was really to be able to address different uh, way of working organization and uh, to be able also to, to integrate every parties on it. And, uh, where we succeed, of course, but uh, that that was a big challenge to be able to yes address different organization in a, in a quite extensive schedule where we were uh, able to deliver sometimes ten kit a month and to install ten ten aircraft uh, sorry ten aircraft a week and so to be able to uh, to install the, uh, the same the same number of aircraft in, into one week. So when you have a kind of a heavy schedule of installation and when you are installing wherever in many different parts with different organizations, it's always a challenge. But we, we were able to, uh, to, um, to succeed on it. Yeah, thanks. Sounds uh, pretty complex, actually. <laughs> Good, thanks. Um, yes, so um, a quick overview of where the, the LRUs are installed into uh, an S320. Uh, you can see uh, it's re really roughly uh, demonstrated here, but that gives you uh, an overview of where the, the LRUs are installed by our teams. 
there is a block diagram that is, uh, let's say, the, 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 the initial input that we are providing to understand, of course, when it comes to details, uh, it becomes more important because there are a lot of connections. So we are using uh, cutting edge technologies in order to help the system to work very fast. We are using fiber optic. We are using RF connection, TX and RX. Uh, between the CGC part and the ROH, and, uh, and also we've installed discrete switch in order to permit uh, the ignition of the system and to, uh, to help any safety procedures. These are quite interesting uh, slides because uh, you can see things that you will never see actually uh, in an aircraft because these things are hidden. Uh, you can see uh, CGC antenna, the belly of the aircraft. So you, you can have the chance to spot it when you board an aircraft fitted with a EAN. But also you can see the BMU part, uh, the CGC inside uh, part of it. And also uh, the ARH, which is, uh, Lucinda will probably correct me, but we, we, which uh, help to, uh, to, uh, to uh, which help to, uh, to, uh, to take the signal from the CGC antenna from the ground. So they are installed uh, very close to the, to the CGC antenna, the belly of the aircraft. Then you can see the SATCOM part of the, uh, of the ERA, EAN uh, installation. So a little uh, small antenna installed uh, on the fuselage and you have uh, uh, the SDU, which is installed by your stringer clip uh, on the, on the, uh, on the under the sailing of the fuselage of the aircraft. Cabin network, of course, to broadcast the Wi-Fi inside the cabin, the server, the control server, the 4G antenna to be able to update uh, the content uh, on the ground. And of course, the wireless access, access point also provided by, by control uh, that are installed uh, on the way of the, of the, of the fuselage, on the hail. And here, a classic planning. If we have to rerun a project from here, you can see that it's not, it's not a lot of time in order to, uh, to customize and to develop and to be able to service another airline with their to ground connectivity. Uh, so there are classic uh, engineering and program management milestones that are showcased here. But yes, we can say that in 14 weeks, we can get the first kit to be delivered. So that's quite uh, an impressive uh, schedule, but uh, we were able to do that thanks to our super supply chain. An important milestone that I want to underline here is uh, the last one, the IRR, the Installation Readiness Review. We kind of invented that uh, milestone at Eclipse Techniques. Uh, this is a very important meeting that happens just at the end of the engineering of the project, and this is milestone uh, is uh, shared between the MRO organization, the operator, the customer, and us. And this is a very important meeting where we are uh, showing uh, in details how the installation will go. So it's a really joint discussion with them. And uh, in order to help to do not find mistakes during the real installation time, and that milestone is very important to be followed when you are installing Android of aircraft. Of, co of course, uh, we are also part of uh, analyzing the aircraft immunity to uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, interference. So uh, there is different steps to be followed. And uh, in the case of an air to ground uh, installation, you can, you can perform backdoor and front door tippets, so I won't go too much into detail into that. It's a, bit, uh, it's a bit complex, but basically that ensures that the system is not interfering with critical computers inside the aircraft. And, that, and the outcome of it permits to use the Wi-Fi system in uh, many phases of, this, of the flight or limit the use of the Wi-Fi in some uh, phases of the flight like low, low operation visibility uh, flights or, uh, or other uh, operations. So Eclipse Techniques is uh, supporting that kind of certification demonstration 
in the range of a, a project like this. One of the last points that I will uh, uh, go through is uh, I talked about uh, the awareness, I talked about the installation kit, the design, the features, but uh, the less source part. And when it comes to the aircraft manufacturer uh, requirement, uh, Eclipse Techniques succeed in uh, also uh, demonstrate uh, that uh, its modifications are compliant with uh, uh, Airbus uh, uh, ESG uh, requirement. Uh, by uh, attaining and by demonstrating uh, the validity of its modification upon the uh, the, the aircraft uh, limit of uh, of validity, so basically our design is uh, is uh, is very uh, can age very well, and uh, our maintenance part permitted to uh, to attain a very very ex extensive limits. And last point, but I wanted just to uh, to be able to talk a bit about that. We are one of the funding members of the IAMA, the Independent uh, uh, Aircraft Modifier Alliance, the IAMA. Uh, and uh, in the within the IAMA, along other funders like Lufthansa Technique, Etihad Engineering, and Voy Aerospace, Fokker, and others, we are trying to improve uh, the value of the mod the STC, the retrofit uh, certification that we are providing during, uh, for example, an air to ground uh, project. And uh, that uh, being part of that alliance permits us to be able not only to just uh, sleep on, on our success, but also to try to improve the way that we are uh, doing our modification, we are certifying it, and uh, we are being efficient and, uh, and smart always on, on that kind of project. For example, we issued a structural modification white paper uh, that helped to, uh, to the, the airline to deal with in-service and continuous airworthiness information for modifications. Uh, not, often more uh, uh, about extended service limit operation. Great, thanks. Great. And thanks. That's, that's for me. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, super interesting uh, insights here. Um, do you see already interest from airline cover um, customers on the project, on, on what you achieved in this? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I was visiting in a business trip uh, China uh, last year, and we were presenting what we've done on air-to-ground uh, connectivity, and they were absolutely uh, very astonished about what, what they've seen, and they were very uh, impressed and wanted to know more because uh, when you have a very large land uh, uh, without a lot of sea inside, of course, you are thinking about an air-to-ground solution. But that's also the case uh, for uh, countries in the Middle East, uh, like uh, Australia, uh, others that have a lot of land. And when it comes to connect different cities and to fly above uh, land, the air-to-ground uh, connectivity uh, comes as a matter of uh, importance. And so, yes, uh, I was very, very impressed to see their reaction and there is definitely a strong interest uh, about not only how we implement that kind of, uh, of systems, but also uh, their need and their interest in uh, using that kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, air to ground system on the fleet. Patrick, what, um, could you explain the process of what it would take to use the EASA uh, STC and validate it in other regions? Sure. So, for example, if we take the example of, the, uh, of China, um, there are some working arrangements that are uh, dealt between uh, administration, uh, depending on uh, uh, where they, they come from and if there is uh, a bilateral agreement between them. And, for example, in China, uh, there is a bilateral agreement, which is uh, actually uh, there is a, an ongoing uh, signature which will come that will recognize automatically modification of EASA in CAAC and uh, alternatively. So sometimes when it comes to transfer an aircraft to Europe, to China, for example, that will be quite swift because there are bilateral agreements that recognize each modification from another side. Sometimes there is no working arrangements or only limited working arrangements and you have to go through a validation process that sometimes 
cost a little bit of fees and uh, work, but uh, usually we are doing that quite uh, quite pretty fast, and uh, that's only a question of uh, um, administration lead time issuance and um, and some kind of uh, administration fees. But we are very much experienced in this because for now more than 20 years we are dealing with kind of every. Uh, civil aviation agencies over the world, in uh, Latin America, in North America with the FA, of course, but also uh, in Africa, in Middle East, and, uh, and in Asia. Awesome. Great. Okay, this sounds uh, very promising, actually, and uh, good news is what uh, the aviation industry needs at the moment, and yesterday we also heard about the recovery going on. So, thank you very much. Um, have a great day in Paris, and yeah, speak soon. Bye now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.